Number 17 then from the 2017 Advanced Tire. There we go, the complex number question, eight marks, but it's just the roots of a polynomial. That's like the friendly face of the complex numbers rather than some of the other things they can ask you to do. So, what does it say? For part A, well, here's the polynomial. If this is a root, for one mark, state a second root. We'll get that very quickly just by stating the conjugate. If that's a root, then two minus i is a root. Now part B, find the value of Q, that's this unknown coefficient at the end, and the remaining roots, six marks. Well, how can I put this down? If you know these two roots, you can reconstruct their factors. So that means that that, I don't want to put that, and Z minus this one are factors. Which means, if you multiply them together, you'll get the quadratic factor that produced them. But there's a very quick way of multiplying them together because of the fact you've got a conjugate pair of complex numbers. There used to be a thing in the higher, which was about roots of a quadratic, which was if alpha and beta are roots, so that x minus alpha and x minus beta form the two factors, then multiplying that out would give you x squared, then minus that and minus that is minus the sum of the roots, and then multiplying them gives a positive, plus the product of the roots. Now that's especially easy with these complex numbers because adding them together, it's best to see it here, the imaginary part disappears and you just get double the number in front. So I could just go straight in with this. It's going to be minus 4z. And the number at the end should be the product of the roots. Now multiplying them together is the pattern for the difference of two squares. I'll just show it. 2 plus i, 2 minus i which should just be the 2 squared minus the i squared. But because it's an i that's been squared, it'll end up plus. So the pattern you actually get is the sum of the squares of the two parts. So 4 plus 1 makes 5, so that means that that should be the quadratic factor. You just get it straight away. Right. Now, problem here is, if it had been... Power 3, you could have found the remaining linear factor quite easily just by comparing the two end parts. However, it's power 4, so you'll have to do the full division just to see where the other factor is. So I'll have to divide this, if I've left myself enough room, into that. Right, so to start z squared to make z to the 4 must be multiplied by 1z squared. Get it in its column. Now multiply it out to see what's left over. So z squared minus 4z cubed plus 5z squared. Subtract it. 16 take away 5 is 11z squared. Negative 6 and that'll be plus 4 is negative 2z cubed. Should have put the plus there. Bring the next one down. Minus 22z z squared into negative 2z cubed would be negative 2z. Multiply it out. Negative 2z cubed. But that'll be plus 8z squared and that'll be minus 10z. Subtract it to see what's left over. Negative 22 but that'll be plus 10 is negative 12. 8, 11 take away 8 is 3. Bring this one down. Now if that is a quadratic factor. And this must go in exactly, so there'll be no remainder when you multiply here. So the number that works for these two must work for all three. That would require a three, so it must be a plus three there. And that would then give you, whoops, 3z squared minus 12z. They matched perfectly. This gives you a plus 15, though. Now, you know that answer should come to zero. So I can say this then. Q minus the 15 should have equaled 0, which means Q is 15. Now, for the remaining pair of factors, I just need to take this equation here. 2z, z squared minus 2z plus 3 equals 0, and solve this. Now you can see fairly quickly this wouldn't work with just integers, because 
you've got four take away 12 for the discriminant. So you'll have to use your quadratic formula to find what's going to be in this case, another pair of conjugate complex roots. Right, so Z would be the negative of B plus or minus the square root of, you already had that. It's four take away 12, which is negative eight all over two. Now, the square root of eight is two root two. So it'll be two divided by two, which is one and two root two divided by two, which is root two. And the remaining square root of negative one is I. So would that do for the remaining roots to write it in this form, or should I spell it out? Maybe I'll give them all numbers. That was one, that was two. So I'll put Z3 is one plus root two I, and Z4 is one minus root two I. So, and that was that one up here. And that was my original one. Ugh, oh, don't want it left out, do we? Part C, just for the one mark, show the solutions to this equation, this polynomial equation, on an Argan diagram. Show these four solutions. So you'll be plotting them as points on an Argan diagram. Now, these are in rectangular form, so the appropriate way to plot them is rectangularly. You don't really need to draw a line to the point because that's the coordinate system for polar coordinates, the distance straight to it and the angle. The coordinates for rectangular coordinates are along and up. So that two plus i means two for the real part, along two, up one. If you wanted to put the coordinates, you'd write two, one. If you wanted to write what the number is, you'd write two plus i. But the simplest way would just be to call it z1. I think I'll just put these numbers in, just so we know where they all are. One, a negative one down here. So z1, sometimes you'd put this in as well, just to show. Z2 is its conjugate, which is symmetrical about the real axis. There's Z2, showing the symmetry in them. Z3 is one along and root two up. There's Z3. I'd better put a root two in there. And its conjugate will be the same along and down. Negative root two, and there's Z4. Notice they don't lie in a circle because this was a polynomial equation, not just the nth root of a number. If it was the nth root of a number, then they'd lie equally spaced around it. The symmetry you get with these polynomials is there's a reflection about the real axis.